Today we're going to be looking at 10 cheap players that you can get in your fantasy football leagues this year. These players are going to help you round out the back end of your roster. Some of these players are shooting for upside. Some of these players are hoping just get into a better situation earlier in the year, middle of the year, as things unfold. But these are players that are really going to help you out, build your fantasy team, and help you win your leagues. But before we dig into this, you have to click that subscribe button right now. Give it a good click with the mouse. Tap with your finger on your phone. Stop missing out on these videos because we're going over these players every day. We're going over strategy. We're going over drafts. We're going over waiver wires. We're going to help you win your league right here on this channel. But let's dig in. Let's look at these 10 players. Some of these we've been over a few times. First player we're going to be talking about, though, Mike Evans. Wide receiver, 3580p. But personally, in some of my leagues, I've seen him fall a little bit further than that. So you are catching him at a discount here. And the reason why is people are scared of Baker Mayfield. They are scared of the offense. They are scared of what this offense could look like. However, Baker Mayfield likes to throw the yellow balls. He likes to throw it deep downfield. He likes throwing it deep downfield or checking it to running backs. Mike Evans, third in deep targets last year. A 36% share of the air yards, 20% target share. What I see from this team with how it's configured, we're probably going to see volatile game scripts, volatile fantasy production out of Mike Evans. Probably going to see some blow-off top games where people saying, oh, you guys shouldn't have faded him. And then we're probably going to have a few games where they're just bust. However, look at the price tag here. He is cheap. He is going to be on the back end of your wide receiver lineup for fantasy and those volatile weeks those boom weeks are going to help you out you're not going to want them if you don't like volatile players if you don't like boom bust players you're not going to like that it's going to hurt your head however at this price tag you're going to get a lot of players like that you're going to get a lot of younger guys you're hoping that takes a step forward you're going to get guys like this who you're going to hope has that plus matchup that allows them to take that step forward in that week so you're expecting that at this price tag making him a good deal because you know you're going to get top-end volatility, top-end games, some boom weeks out of him, and you can cash in on that throughout the season. And I like the price tag here. Very cheap for what you're getting because you're getting a very good wide receiver who's been productive every year of his career, probably going to be productive this year, and is going to help you win some games in fantasy as long as he's healthy and is on the field. Next is Jordan Addison. He's still going fairly cheap. I expect the price to keep rising, though. I expect him not to be a discount if you draft late. I expect him to rise up boards a bit. So this might even be information you don't even need right now. It might be more expensive in your league, depending on who you're drafting with, where you're from. If you're in Minnesota, you're probably drafting with guys who are really taking him a few rounds earlier. If you're in another part of the country, maybe not. But Jordan Addison is a good rookie. Broke out with two different collegiate programs. Very nuanced route runner. Got Kenny Pickett drafted in the first round. Kenny Pickett would not be on the Steelers if it weren't for this guy right here. If it weren't for this guy, you guys would not be talking about Kenny Pickett right now. You guys just would not be. It's because of this dude right here. He has good ball skills for his size. Plays bigger than his size. Now we're on a Vikings offense. We have Justin Jefferson on the other side. He's going to take the heat off of Addison. On top of that, we have a fast-paced offense, 7th in the league in pace last year, 40 pass attempts a game. Some targets are going to go him. A fair amount of targets are going to go his way. He's going to get open. He's going to have coverage that is going to be trending towards him because the defenses are going to be focused on Justin Jefferson because who's not? He also got a good tight end there. There's going to be optimal opportunity for this dude to give you some good weeks. Plus, he's a good rookie who was drafted in the first round. There's a chance he just goes off, hits the ground running, and you don't want to miss out on that at this price tag. He's going in an area of the draft, too, where the well of wide receivers is starting to run dry, and you're going to want to chase some of these upside plays. He's one of them. Next is Samaji P. Ryan, RB3780P. And the thing about this is we're watching the situation here. We're watching the situation here in Denver, mainly Javante Williams, how he comes back from the injury. So far, things have been looking good. Things have been looking really good. He looks like he's going to be playing this year, might be available week one. Everything's looking good per reports. But you're coming back from an injury. A full season's hard to do. 
Pirine has proven to give you some spike weeks, but that's in the Bengals' offense. But he's very dependable. Good pass blocker, good between the tackles. Catch a little bit, can get you those dump offs, but can do a little bit of everything. And that's what coaches want as their RB2 or as their insurance policy running back on their team because they can just put them in there. And the opportunity could be there. They invested more in this offensive line. They put some more money at the offensive line, so it should be a little better this year. Russell Wilson has another year with the team. We have Sean Payton now. Javante Williams coming back from the injury. What if that crops up? What if it happens again? What if he has some more injuries? Who knows? RB37, RB40 range. Could be cheaper in your league, really. Could be cheaper. I imagine he's going to go cheaper. I imagine he will get cheaper throughout the draft season because the news on Javante Williams doesn't sound too bad. Expect him to come at a better discount than what we're seeing right now. Next, Damian Harris, RB38 ADP. And again, we're at this part of the draft where we're spraying and praying on running backs. We're closing our eyes and hitting that button. Some of these guys are in committees. Some of these guys are RB2s. Some of these guys are in ambiguous situations, and we just need another shoe to drop. Some of these guys are just RB1s, but just haven't been productive throughout their career, but we're just drafting the touches. We're just taking shots here. Here, honestly, we're taking shots on the Bills offense. We're taking shots on the Bills offense because who does not want to? One of the most explosive Offenses in the league. Devin Singletary's gone. A good share of the workload is gone to another team. That's going to open things up. James Cook is there. We know. We know. Damon Harris, RB38. RB38, super cheap. Super cheap. Should be getting opportunities. Goal line opportunities. He's a good pass blocker. Decent between the tackles. There's volume in this offense. Ambiguity at running back with all teams is going to happen due to injuries. Because that's how the running back position is played. You're getting a cheap running back here in a good offense who's proven to be able to do some things over in New England. And you're getting him super cheap if I haven't said that yet. Next is Brandon Cooks. Why you see him 43? But you know what? He's been nothing but good throughout his career. At Dallas, we expect him to do some good things. Even though he's older. He's been in the league since 2014. But he's posted 1,000 yards at least one season with every team he's been with. He's been good with just about any type of quarterback you can name. From Hall of Famers to Jabronis. But Brandon Cooks is a nuanced route runner. He gets deep downfield. He has speed. This Dallas offense might be slower paced. It might be faster paced. Because they did not bring in any running backs of consequences to challenge Tony Pollard. So if something happens to them, they might go YOLO in the passing game, start throwing it up, start showing more volume. That could play in the Brandon Cooks. Also, they do tend to get in the game scripts where it's very impactful for these wide receivers. So you want to be on the lookout for that. And then the price is free. You're drafting him at at like a wide receiver 5 range. You're drafting him there. So if you get a few spike weeks, like say you get two wide receiver, two games, two top tier ones of those, you're really hitting on him at that price. Think of it that way. You're hitting on him at that price. If you get two top tier wide receiver, two games out of this, two games where he gives you 15 fantasy points, you're hitting on the year. You're ahead of your investment. But still a good player to look at just in case. Next is Zay Flowers, wide receiver 46 ADP, first round pick, very nuanced, has speed, and a guy you want to pay attention to. Imagine his price is going to go up as we get into draft season because he's been looking good at training camp, been looking damn good. I like Zay Flowers. The big question here is the offense. About 20 to 40% share of the targets goes to the tight end. Mark Andrews is great. We love him. Also, Lamar Jackson doesn't always sling the rock. The passing ratios are turning more to the run in a lot of games. Tom Munkin's there. Should expedite things. However, this could create volatility. Volatility is great at this price tag, though. If we get some top-tier games, then that's good. Another thing here is the gamble. The gamble is great because he is a young wide receiver who is nuanced, who is very talented, who could hit the ground running and really make it impact quick. Could be one of those rookie wide receivers who give you wide receiver one weeks on end, and you don't want to miss out on that gamble. And even if it misses, 
you got a volatile wide receiver because that projects to be that way. Now we're looking at Tank Bigsby, RB46 and ADP. And again, we're drafting the Jaguars offense here. He's a talented rookie. He's a rookie that can do everything. He can do everything. He's not exceptional well, at any aspect of his game. But honestly, you can plug him in there. He can run between tackles. He can catch a little bit, get you a little bit on the outside, pass block a little bit, pound it in the red zone. He can do a little bit of everything. That holds value to an NFL team. Plus, he's on the Jaguars offense, which you're going to see pace. You're going to see efficiency. They're going to be moving the chains, giving more opportunity. We do have Travis Etienne there, but that doesn't matter at this price tag. We're expecting volatility at the running back position on all teams. Things are going to happen, and we're just shooting our shots. Rookie running backs get opportunity as well throughout the year. So look for him to be a dark horse. A lot of people chatting him up. He's going to get more expensive than this. Probably in the RB 30s. Probably like 39 to 36 range. Somewhere like that. He's going to jump up some spots. Because they've been talking about giving him a bigger workload. Because he's been looking good in preseason. Something happens to ETN. We know he's getting a much bigger role. And a good offense. That's something you're going to want on your team. Might as well have that locked down. You want talented running backs. Who are backups and good offenses. As your handcuffs. That's one of them. He does have some talent. He can give you a pathway where he can give you good fantasy production. The next guy we're looking at here is Elijah Moore, wide receiver 44 and ADP. Broke out as a rookie, shown he can be productive already with the Jets, even though last year was a very wonky season. We have Deshaun Watson there. Should be moving the ball a little bit better since he's got a full off season. So a big uptick in the passing game. Productive in college. We've been seeing him move him around a lot in training camp and in mini camp. They're going to get him involved. He's been looking good in preseason. Don't worry about the ribs because that injury happened week one of preseason and looks like he's good to go. Looks like he's going to be good to go for week one. Elijah Moore has been making plays all training camp long too. He's been a highlight reel left and right with the amazing catches. Now we're looking at Rashawn Johnson, RB48. Rookie running back. Draft capital is okay. First running back taken in the fourth round. However, he's in a situation where the running back situation is a little bit ambiguous. We have some guys there. Khalil Herbert's the incumbent. Deontay Foreman was brought in. He's good in pass protection. He has good size. Good wiggle for his size as well. Moves well. Looks good. Even with Bijan Robinson there in Texas, he looked good. Could give you some opportunity there to cash in on some fantasy points. You really going to have to monitor him throughout the year. Could be times where you're picking them up off waivers because they do have some other running backs taking snaps. They have some other opportunities there in the offense with this team. But again, a rookie that you want to hit your wagon to just in case he exceeds expectations. Now we're talking about Zamir White's RB64 and ADP. A lot of upside here. Josh Jacobs, potential holdout, waiting for him to come back. Josh Jacobs, though, also has an injury history to him. And plus, all running backs are potential injury risks because how the position's played. Zamir White has a ton of upside. 96 percentile speed score. Can really get it done between the tackles. Rookie season did not look good. Fell in the fourth round, but they don't call him Zeus for no reason. Big physical runner with some upside here, and that's all we're looking at. RB64. That price is going up as the days unfold, as we get closer into draft season. I look for that ADP to be more in the 50s late 40s as we get heavy into drafts we're looking at underdog best ball drafts right now for adp because right now redraft leagues are just now starting to pop off really you're not really going to get a real adp until after all the drafts have happened honestly but zamir white is going to give you some potential some upside if something happens to josh jacobs you want these handcuffs that are talented you want ones that could go nuclear on you and if it doesn't happen you turn and burn to the waiver wire. You need to be taking risks in these double-digit rounds. You need to be shooting for upside. And if it doesn't happen or the waiver wire looks good, you don't have you have the sunk cost not investing in these upside players that you can just flip them around, get what you want, play the waiver wire, and be aggressive. But if you're drafting a bunch of roster cloggers on your team who you're scared to drop, because they're getting you 8 to 12 fantasy points a game, that's going to hurt you because you're not going to be aggressive on the waiver wire. You want some of these players with high upside. And if they fall on their face, 
you can really use that drag on your portfolio to chase some guys off the waivers. That's the big thing. You want to be aggressive on the waiver wire, especially early in the season, especially when injuries start to hit the running back position. You want to be there and you want to be ready. But let me know who you're trying to get late in your drafts this year. Who you're trying to get on the cheap. I want to hear about it. Smash that subscribe button. Catch you on the next video.